The moment in my life where I finally said I need to stop doing what I'm doing and turn my life around was that first day I saw Joe Clunch and the football team. They're doing laps, and Joe is telling them, each and every one of them that's going, it can be achieved. And he was saying their names, it can be achieved, it can be achieved. And just hearing that, I stood there and I said, man, I want to be a part of something that great. I want to be part of that team. If I could get this every day, I don't need to be doing what I'm doing. And that completely changed my life, and I'm glad it did because, honestly, I don't know where my life would be if I had never met him or seen what I seen that day. There's two things that bring the community together. One is culture. Everybody comes together around that. And the second is sports. Um, the community really comes together around sports. And so when we offer a soccer league in the community, um, even though soccer is not something that has traditionally been played here, we'll still have over 200 kids between the ages of 7 and 12 apply. Their parents will volunteer to coach um, just to engage in that together. We had 200 kids apply to our, soccer, our, our basketball league this um, last fall, and I think our registration filled up within two days. Within two days, we were churning away every application and we started a waiting list. We were hearing from parents uh, that one of the other barriers to being active with their kids and having a healthy uh, lifestyle was a lack of physical spaces to, to do those things. Um, lack of safe places to go for walks with their kids and runs. There wasn't a, a really safe park where people could gather and play. So about five years ago, we started um, working on, on that and got some funding to create what are now uh, close to 10 uh, hiking and walking trails all around the community, uh, over 60 miles worth of trails, which are beautifully marked with uh, mile markers every half mile uh, by a Zuni artist. Not all kids are interested in um, playing sports. I come from that. I, I'm not really interested in playing sports. And so if we offer something more for the, the ones that aren't interested in sports, I think that our program will continue to grow even more. We employed a uh, local potter. She's teaching them how to use the clay, kind of teaching them how to make beads so that they can make a necklace. I heard her talking and talking about how to respect the earth and, and that's what I was taught and I think that if we have all of these artisans come in and you know talk about their experience uh, making art and what they've learned, I think that we can pass that on to the kids. Like this is the first time we're dancing, so that's that's a good experience for me because I live I'm not I don't live here in the village I live up in Black Rock and for me like I wasn't really a fortunate to you know take part in my religion like I really wanted to so I guess that part just that's one of my weaknesses is being able to speak fluently and you know share some share stuff about the culture with them. ZYP is heavily involved in a lot of the community gardening work um, here in Zuni. Um, we've helped to establish a number of gardens um, around the whole Pueblo, a few at the schools, um, uh, summer camp, um, our Zuni WIC program. Um, we'll have one at our new um, our new program site that we're breaking ground on. Um, so it's really helped to create uh, not only a, a sense of community, but also to bring back some of the tr uh, agriculture traditions um, amongst the people here. And a lot of the produce is either donated to community members, um, used for uh, food tastings, um, nutrition education, and then a huge part of that has been a free farmer's market that we've been able to establish through um, our youth sports programming. So we reach anywhere from three to five hundred people at any given time that are able to come by, um, grab a, a fresh vegetable that's been grown here, taste it right there on the spot, learn about the benefits of it. First Nations Development Institute has helped us tremendously to be able to establish a lot of this work. They brought in different grant funders from around the country to talk to us and tell us what we should be putting in our applications and um, how to approach the grant the, the grant um, application process. And I found that really helpful. Since then, First Nations Development Institute has provided us with technical advisors that help us fundraise and help us apply for grants. And these aren't skills that 
you know, I learned in my studies at school. These are things that I'm having to acquire along the way and that our organization is having to acquire along the way. And what I've really recognized in that, in the First Nations Development Institute is they know what's going on and they know what we need and they're trying to provide it. They're trying to fill in the gaps for small organizations like ours that are in Indian country doing the work on the ground and we couldn't do what we do without their help. I've never had so many people look up look at me the way that they look at me. Andrea, Joe, Avery, Shelley, all of them, the way that they see me it makes me feel great inside because they actually see the change that I've done and they actually recognize it and they know that I'm trying to do something better with my life. It's crazy because now I'm helping him coach the high school football team. I'm helping here with this, and you know we're volunteering most of the time, so it's it's all good to me. I love it. I wouldn't rather be doing anything else.